On Friday the 12th of March 1993, Mumbai was brought to its knees. Between 1.30 and 3.40 p.m., a series of 12 explosions ripped through Mumbai as bombs placed in cars, scooters and hotels went off in a coordinated action that left 257 people dead and 700 injured. The sites had been carefully chosen. They were prominent landmarks and symbols of Mumbai's position as India's financial capital. The first explosion went off at the 28-storey Bombay Stock Exchange. Next, there were explosions in other commercial hubs like Zaveri Bazaar and Century Bazaar. There were also blasts at the Juhu Centaur Hotel, Hotel Sea Rock and Plaza Cinema. The Air India building and the passport office were also bombed and grenades were lobbed at the Sahar International Airport. It was an act of terror never seen before on Indian soil. And the message was clear that Mumbai, the country's financial heart, could be brought to its knees in just minutes. The Mumbai serial blast sent out another message. Investigations soon revealed the involvement of notorious gangster Dawood Ibrahim and Pakistan's army and intelligence agency, the Inter-Services Intelligence or ISI. The motive, it appeared, was to trigger communal violence. After establishing his hold over the Mumbai underworld, Dawood had taken refuge in Dubai and later Pakistan, where he still believed to be living. Even though he has been declared a global terrorist by India and the US, Pakistan refuses to hand him over to India. The Mumbai blast had wrought havoc on an unprecedented scale, and this wasn't all that was intended. The Mumbai police nabbed a group of terrorists headed in a car for the Bombay Municipal Corporation, the city's civic headquarters. They had planned to kill members of the Shiv Sena in the corporation. Arms and ammunition were recovered from the car, which was linked to Tiger Memon, a key Dawood aide. Investigations into the serial blasts were in full swing and the motive was becoming increasingly clear. The plan to kill Shiv Sena corporators revealed that the serial blasts were an act of revenge for the two rounds of communal rioting that followed the demolition of the Babri Masjid in Ayodhya three months earlier in December 1992. After the Babri Masjid was demolished, violence broke out across the country as Hindus and Muslims clashed on the streets. In the run-up to the serial blasts, there were two phases of riots in Mumbai one more devastating than the other, in December 1992 and then in January 1993. In fact, even before the Babri Masjid was raised, riots had broken out across India as the movement for the construction of the Ram Temple at the site of the mosque gained momentum. The Rath Yatra taken out by the president of the Bharatiya Janata Party, L.K. Advani, between August and October 1990 had left a trail of violence in cities across eight states. The country was sitting on a powder keg where the Babri Masjid was brought down. Now the demolition lit the fire that consumed Mumbai city. The Mumbai riots in December 1992 and January 1993 left an estimated 900 people dead and more than 2,000 injured. It was the worst ever cycle of violence Mumbai had ever experienced. Now, in 1993, the original plan seemed to have been to detonate bombs on Shiv Jayanti, the birth anniversary of Maratha ruler Chhatrapati Shivaji in April 1993. But the arrest of a Dawood gang member in March led the conspirators to advance the date. The arrested gangster had confessed to the police that he had been sent to Pakistan for arms training and that there was a conspiracy to bomb major locations in Mumbai. However, the police didn't take his claim seriously. In the run-up to Mumbai's serial blast, two dozen Muslim youths were trained in the use of arms and explosives in Pakistan. In Mumbai, Tiger Memon headed the operations. He organized arms training for gangsters in the forest near Raigarh district in Maharashtra. 
arms and explosives supplied by Pakistan's ISI were smuggled in via the sea and the consignments landed on the Raigad coast in January and February 1993. On the 11th of March, Memon held a final meeting to review preparations for the blast. At 5.30 a.m. on the 12th of March, only hours before the first bomb went off in Mumbai, he boarded a flight for Dubai to join his family and Dawood to watch the carnage. In the years that followed the 1993 serial bomb blast, many were arrested. In September 2006, 12 accused were awarded the death penalty and 20 were sentenced to life imprisonment. In March 2013, the Supreme Court upheld the death sentence of Yakub Memon, brother of Tiger Memon, and commuted the capital punishment of the 11 to life imprisonment. In June 2015, Yakub Memon was hanged to death. But the key conspirators, Dawood Abraham and Tiger Memon, continue to elude the police as they remain in safe havens provided by Pakistan's ISI. Mumbai had always prided itself on its resilience, but the 1993 serial blast had left the city wounded and vulnerable. It was the victim of three more terror attacks in the years to come. On the 11th of July 2006, a series of seven bombs were detonated in Mumbai's local trains, the city's lifeline. And on the 26th of November 2008, coordinated attacks at multiple locations killed 172 people in high-profile landmarks such as the city's biggest railway terminus and two major hotels. This act of terror was led by Ajmal Kasab, a Pakistani national and a member of the terror outfit, the lashkar e taiba Kasab confessed to his crime and was hanged to death in 2012. In the third attack, on the 13th of July 2011, three coordinated blasts ripped through Zaveri Bazaar, Opera House and Dadar West, killing 26 people and injuring 130. Yet again, there was proof of Pakistan's involvement in fueling terrorism in India, a trend that got a new lease of life after Pakistan lost the Bangladesh War in 1971.